Nearly 1.7 million tourists visit Iceland every year. Its dramatic landscape and untouched wilderness attracts people from all over the world. Iceland is also known as the land of fire and ice. Due to its volcanic and glacial terrains that continue to shape Iceland's landscape as well as heavily influences its culture. According to the Icelandic Tourist Board, this year around 523,000 tourists from the US, 182,000 from the UK and 120,000 from Germany visited Iceland. The name Iceland was given by a Viking called Floki Vilgerarson. The saga of Icelanders say that on his way to the island, his daughter drowned and his livestock starved to death. He was completely discouraged because of his loss. He then miraculously climbed a mountain and saw a fjord full of icebergs which led him to give the island its current name. Hello guys and welcome to my channel Vander in Solitude. In this video, I'll help you plan your dream Icelandic adventure. I've done all the hard work of figuring out the best places and the most efficient ways to visit Iceland so that you don't have to go through all the trouble yourself. So sit back and let me take you to Iceland in 4K. But before that, make sure to support me by subscribing so that I can keep creating these travel experiences for you. First things first, Iceland is a very expensive country. Like I live in Germany and I used to think that Germany is expensive to travel. But I realized how wrong I was after visiting Iceland. You will have a lot of options for food and stay around the capital region in Iceland. But in the countryside as you move towards the more picturesque locations, the options for stay will reduce drastically and they will be expensive as well. So the best thing for you is to plan your trip at least two months ahead and make reservations for your accommodations in advance. Also you will have to map out your itinerary and plan your transportation ahead of time as well. You can try something like this interactive map by visiticeland.com to map out your routes, save them, contact tour operators in advance or explore options. To ensure we travel efficiently, I will first start with some basic know-how to get you started before coming to Iceland. The first thing is the knowledge of how to use public transportation in Iceland. You should know how to keep track of the public buses since there is a high probability that your bus may get cancelled if the weather is bad and you may find yourself stuck in a remote location. Trust me, this happens quite frequently, especially when you are far from the capital region and the weather becomes windy and rainy and the next thing you know, the bus gets cancelled. Iceland's bus transportation is handled by a company called Strato. They have an app called Clapit, 
where you can book your tickets and scan them when you board the bus. But be careful since there are different types of buses. For example, if you travel within the capital region, you can buy a single fare ticket which will cost you 570 Icelandic krona. Once you activate your ticket, it will be valid for 75 minutes. This means you can scan the barcode when you board the bus multiple times within 75 minutes. Or you can buy a ticket when you board the bus via debit or credit card. Then there are the provincial buses which travel in the countryside outside the capital zone. These buses you have to buy tickets when you board them. Each of these buses have a credit card processing machine on site. Also you can pay with cash if you like. You can also track the buses live in the Strato website or the Clapid app. Go to the planner section in the app, click on the live bus route and select a route that you want to track. You can see the bus pointer on the map which will update in real time. Plus, if you want to confirm the timings of the bus, feel free to call them anytime. Go to the contact section in the app and you can call them on the number shown. You can also check out major announcements regarding weather in the app as well. After mastering the public transportation in Iceland, you have to make sure you are safe while traveling in Iceland. On average, Iceland experiences a volcanic event every four years and is home to some of the most feared volcanoes on the planet. including the Katla volcano which lies under the glacial ice hundreds of meters thick. Meaning any eruption is likely to melt the ice and cause widespread flooding. There is a Netflix original series based on a dystopian scenario where the Katla volcano erupts and what catastrophes follows after. Do check it out. Therefore, it's very important to look for any warnings related to road conditions and volcanic activities while you're traveling in Iceland. For this safety, there is an app called Safe Travel and the website safetravel.is where you can find all the alerts and you can find 112 emergency services near you via the app. You can submit your travel plans and hiking routes in advance before you embark on some adventure in Iceland. Now that you are traveling safe and have mapped out the itinerary of your trip, you need to understand how the payment system works in Iceland. The official currency in Iceland is ISK or the Icelandic Krona. 1 Euro is equal to 147 ISK and 1 USD or US Dollar is equal to 138 ISK as of now. Everywhere in Iceland, you can make your payment via your credit card or debit card. So what I did was I created a multi-currency account in my Revolut bank account and transferred some euros into ISK. This way, every time I made a transaction in ISK, it will have zero conversion fees and will directly debit from the ISK account. You can also do the same if possible in your bank, otherwise you can just pay with your card and your bank will do the conversion on the fly. 
I don't recommend carrying cash as I never felt the need to use it anywhere during my entire journey. After sorting your finances, make sure to take care of what you will wear in Iceland. Your clothes play a vital role in making your trip enjoyable or not. If you are not prepared for the Icelandic weather and difficult conditions, your trip will soon turn into a nightmare. It's very important to keep waterproof rain cover as it's highly likely you will get wet in the rain or if not rain then definitely in one of the waterfalls. For hitchhikers you must carry a waterproof jacket, pants and rain cover for your backpack as well. Make sure you have a windproof layer of fleece or jacket as well. The winds in Iceland can get very high and cold. Make sure to carry warm gloves and a cap for your head. Check the temperature and weather before going out for the day and prepare accordingly. Now that you have proper clothing and can't wait to embark on your Icelandic journey, you just realized you don't have a place to stay. This is probably the most expensive part of your trip, but don't worry, I'll help you save some bucks here. First thing, if you are a camper, you can save a lot of money on your stay, as there are a lot of camping grounds in Iceland. They are fairly cheap and can prevent you from making a hole in your pocket as the hotels and even hostels can be very expensive in Iceland, especially in the countryside regions outside the capital. There are some good hostel options as well, but make sure to book them in advance as the availability is very limited during the peak season. Camping is also a way to connect with nature and Iceland is home to many geological wonders which are just unbelievable until seen with your own eyes. But be aware that it's not permitted to camp just anywhere in Iceland. This is known as wild camping. This practice is not only illegal but heavily discouraged due to its impact on the environment and people. For camping, there are special campsites where you can use it after paying a small fee. You can find major campsites in Iceland in the link in the description of the video. Another option is to try couch surfing. If you haven't heard about it, it's a community of travelers where you can request a place to stay and in return get to know people by sharing your story and an experience local culture wherever you travel. also offer your place to travelers who are looking for a place to stay as a stopover or explore the city. It's a cool and interesting way to make new friends while also exploring the culture and history of the place where you travel. I use it almost on all of my travels wherever possible. Make sure to check it out. I think you are ready now to travel to one of the most unique places on earth. So now let's dive into my journey to Iceland and get some info on the places I visited so that you can learn from my experience. So my journey begins from Berlin, Germany. My flight landed at Keflavik airport in Iceland. At the airport, you will find direct transfers to Reykjavik through Flybus, which is run by Reykjavik Excursions. They have a counter at the arrivals at the airport where you can buy tickets. 
There is a bus every hour and the ticket to Reykjavik will cost you 3,899 ISK. I got off at the BSI bus terminal. Since the check-in in my hostel was around 3 pm, I was still very early in the day. So I found a locker at the terminal and kept my luggage inside it. These lockers are really useful and they don't cost much. Their price depends upon the size of the locker you choose. You can find more information about different luggage locker locations and their prices in the description of the video. After getting rid of some of the heavier luggage, I bought a round trip transfer ticket from the BSI terminal to the famous Blue Lagoon. You can also go directly from the airport to the Blue Lagoon since it's just 15 minute ride from the airport. This round trip transfer ticket will cost you 6199 ISK. The Blue Lagoon is a geothermal spa found in the Reykjanes Peninsula in southwest Iceland. The reason why it's the most popular attraction in Iceland is because of the healing qualities of the water. Those with conditions such as psoriasis find the water immediately soothing for their condition. Blue Lagoon also has a restaurant, cafe and a spa including a sauna, steam room and a small waterfall on site as well. In 2012, National Geographic published a list of 25 wonders of the world which they titled Earth's Most Awesome Places. The Blue Lagoon was included in that list because the Blue Lagoon's geothermal water is 70% ocean, 30% fresh water, enriched with silica, algae and minerals. The entry to Blue Lagoon is 60 euros. After experiencing the iconic Blue Lagoon, I went back to Reykjavik and decided to go for a walk in the city and explore some local landmarks. First, I came across the wonderful church called Halskrimt Karja that looks like something straight out of Asgard from the Thor movies. The concrete pillars resemble the basalt columns which is a common motif in Icelandic landscape. Right next to it you will find Cafe Loki where I had the traditional Icelandic lamb soup with the Icelandic bread. It was delicious. Another cool place to visit is the Rainbow Street in Iceland. The Rainbow Street is a sign of joy and support for diversity. I was lucky to spot Northern Lights in the night that day. Almost every hostel has a Northern Lights tour that you can book. Find more information about Northern Lights tour in the description of the video. The next day, I moved forward in my journey along the south coast of Iceland towards Holtsvallur. I took bus route 52 from Mjord bus stop in Reykjavik. This is the main bus station in Reykjavik. You can find all different routes originating from here. The price for a single ticket is 4560 ISK and the journey is about one and a half hours. On this route, you will find two beautiful waterfalls. One is the famous Seljaland Foss, which is known for its path behind the waterfall as this waterfall can be fully encircled, which gives it a unique and picturesque view. The other waterfall is known as, I can't pronounce this guys, it's commonly known as the Canyon Dweller. Even though thousands of people visit Seljaland Foss, very few spot this hidden waterfall just ahead of it. It's a hidden gem and an excellent spot for photographers. Later I moved further along the south coast to my hostel where I was staying for the night. It's known as Paradise Cave Hostel and wow was it an amazing location. There was a beautiful waterfall just behind the hostel known as Trifundi. The hostel was probably the best place I stayed in my entire journey in Iceland. I was staying in a dorm and it was really clean, warm and cozy.
The next day I headed towards another grand waterfall. The waterfall is known as Koga Foss. It's one of the biggest and most beautiful waterfall with an astounding width of 25 meters. There is a folklore surrounding Skoga Foss. A gold ring is on display at the Skoga Foss Museum. According to legend, the ring is from a chest that was owned by Thrasi Thralson, one of the first Viking settlers in the area, who by some accounts was a giant. Folklore states that before he died in 980, Thrasi buried a chest filled with gold in a cave behind Skoga Foss waterfall. Many attempts were made to retrieve the chest after Thrasi's death and years later locals managed to grasp a ring on the side of the chest as they pulled the ring broke off and the treasure was lost forever On the way back from Skoga Foss, I came across this unique rock formation in the middle of land, and there were huts embedded into the rock formation. I was curious to see what this landmark was called. It's known as Drangurinin Drangshli and surprisingly there are many elf stories linked to it. In the local folklore it's believed that the elves lived inside the rock and often took care of the cows in the cow sheds while they were giving birth to their calves. I briefly want to mention that from Holsvallur you can also travel to Thorsmok which is a nature preserve in the southern Icelandic highlands named after Thor the Norse god of thunder Thorsmok is truly a sight to behold nestled between the gigantic glaciers this nature reserve offers an intimate experience with diverse Icelandic landscapes there is a bus run by south coast adventures which will cost you 6500 isk only for the transfer to Thorsmok This is the cheapest option in my experience to reach Icelandic highlands. I was unfortunately not able to go to Thorsmok because I was unaware of this option before my journey, but you can. The next day I headed further along the south coast towards my next destination which was near the Skaftafell nature reserve. I decided to hitchhike this route which was around 218 km and it was an amazing experience. You may double your guards But no one really knows About your house of cards that the wind blows Ooh. Ooh. 
on the way i stopped at some key landmarks and locations first was the world famous rainish fera also known as the black sand beach which was voted by national geographic in 1991 in the top 10 non tropical beaches on the planet it's known for its enormous basalt rocks roaring atlantic waves and stunning panoramas The roaring waves of Rainish Fera are particularly dangerous, often pushing further up the beach than many would expect. Therefore, they are called sneaker waves and can appear when least expected. Make sure to never turn your back on those waves. Next location close to the black beach is the Darlia Arc. It's known for its staggering view of the Iceland's south coast, its historic lighthouse and its wealth of bird life. A secret well kept But everyone knows You try to keep it so still but the wind blows Darlia has an abundance of bird life the most common year round being the eider ducks Iceland's favorite winged resident the migratory atlantic puffin can also be found here from May to September The next location is somewhat nostalgic for those who are fans of Star Wars films. There is a natural wonder nestled in the heart of black sands and lava fields of Iceland known as the Yoda Cave. Not only does the cave's entrance resembles the silhouette of the legendary Jedi Master Yoda, but it was also a vital shooting location for the film Rogue One Star Wars Story. In the film's opening scene, you might recognize the area as Jen Erso's hiding spot on the planet Lomu. The next stop was the Sistra Foss waterfall located in the village of Kurju Bayer Cluster. The beautiful waterfall may look like an ordinary waterfall however this is not the case since it comprises of two cascading streams of similar heights a small lake sistra vatn seeds the waterfall you can check out this lake if you walk to the top of the waterfall and walk a bit from there 
Lastly, I reached my accommodation in the evening and it was beautifully located near the Swinna Fels Yokul Glacier. It's a campsite and they have variety of cheap options to stay. You can even camp for there for a small fee. Find more about it in the link in the description of the video. The next morning was just surreal and beautiful witnessing the tongues of glaciers on a bright day and I was heading for my next destination which was the famous glacial lagoon known as Yokur Sarlon. Yokul Sarlon is one of Iceland's natural crown jewels and the nearby black beach has coined the name Diamond Beach as the ice chunks lying on it resembles diamonds glistening in the sun. It is Iceland's deepest lake with a maximum depth of 248 meters. The Iceland connects with the ocean and is composed of seawater and freshwater. This is what creates the unique color. Yokul Sarlon sits south of Vatna Yokul which is Europe's largest glacier. Yogul Sarlon's icy landscape have attracted many filmmakers. Just to name a few, Batman Begins, Die Another Date, Interstellar and The Secret Life of Walter Mitty were all filmed around this location. One of the most common activity that people do here are the boat tours. There are two different types of tours. The first one is called Zodiac Tour which goes all the way up close to the glacier and with the 4 to 5 people you might need to book them in advance as they tend to sell out. The other one is called amphibian tour. They leave multiple times a day and have a capacity of 30 people. The zodiac can cost you around 13,900 ISK and the amphibian can cost you around 6,300 ISK. Another activity that you can do is the ice cave tours where you can explore the natural blue ice caves of the Vatna Yokul Glacier. As the glacier moves, it creates different looking ice caves each year. These tours can range between 20,000 ISK to 40,000 ISK. Find more information about different activities to do in the description of the video. Next day I headed back to Reykjavik and from there I went to the northwest part of Iceland to see the stunning and unique mountain known as Kirkjufell or the Church Mountain. It's a distinctly shaped peak found on the north shore of Iceland's Snæfells Peninsula. Fans of the HBO series Game of Thrones will recognize Kirkjufell as a shooting location from season 7 of Game of Thrones. The mountain is showcased in the Beyond the Wall episode when Jon Snow, the Hound and Jorah Mormont brave the wilderness in hopes of catching an undead white. Having seen it in a vision, the Hound acknowledges Kirkjufell as the mountain like an arrowhead. After taking in the majestic beauty of Kirkjufell mountain, I went further west to the town of Halisandur. 
Elisandu is a village dating back to the 16th century found on the northwesternmost point of Snæfellsnes peninsula in West Iceland. Locals like to call Helisandur the street art capital of Iceland as you will find many colorful and interesting murals painted on the walls of buildings.